Well, I want to thank my colleagues um, for certainly pointing to all of the issues that we are concerned about uh, from the health, public health community's perspective. And I especially want to thank Mary Asunta, who has been such a champion of tobacco control in her country and in her region, um, and is, uh, is someone we turn to often at, at the campaign for her guidance and her expertise. This morning, Mary has made all the arguments. So um, it is uh, challenging to follow her um, because she has so cogently and clearly explained why it is that keeping tobacco out of the TPP and supporting the Malaysian carve-out approach is really, uh, as far as we can tell, the, uh, the best and perhaps only way to prevent the TPP from becoming another weapon in the arsenal of the tobacco industry. The Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids was founded in the U.S. 17 years ago. Um, we do uh, a lot of work um, domestically in the U.S., and that was originally our focus. And uh, approximately seven years ago, uh, we began to work in low- and middle-income countries as a partner in the Bloomberg Philanthropies Initiative on Tobacco Control. And we focus our work um, on encouraging governments in low- and middle-income countries to implement the FCTC, exactly as, as Mary has indicated. And it became clear to us and to um, uh, one of our uh, beloved staff members who uh, passed away, Judy Wilkenfeld, who began this work at the campaign more than a decade ago. It became, became clear that trade agreements were the 21st century weapon and that we really needed to uh, devote some uh, attention and, and energy to trying to prevent the use of these trade agreements. It's often, as we go through our um, lobbying activities in Washington, um, we, are, we are told, well, the TPP is simply one treaty, and there are many other treaties. And even if you're successful in the TPP, the tobacco industry will still be able to use all of the other weapons in their arsenal that they are currently using. And there are a number of bilateral agreements, and the Hong Kong-Australia agreement is one. The Uruguay-Switzerland agreement is another um, in a different region of the world, uh, where Philip Morris International has used those agreements to bring uh, these lawsuits. NAFTA is one. Um, uh, used to prevent Canada from um, uh, uh, passing uh, labeling uh, in 1995. And our answer is exactly what Mary has just said. The TPP is being touted as the 21st century trade agreement. It is being touted as the gold standard. We are hearing that more and more countries want to become participants in the TPP. Uh, Korea, the latest one. Um, uh, Taiwan. There may, you know, there may be a number of other countries, and in fact, um, a staff at the USTR Trade Representative's Office has told us that other countries expect to join this agreement. And to us, that provides even more ammunition for our argument that it is critical that this treaty put a stop, it, that it be the first treaty, that it be the gold standard in public health protection against the tobacco industry's use of trade as the ultimate weapon that they still have in their arsenal. As Mary has said, if nothing is done, if more is not done than is done today, one billion people will die in this century, and 80% of those people will be from low and, and middle income developing countries. When I was in Brunei and presented at the stakeholder session, I noted that in the time that the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids has worked on this agreement since, ha has been trying to keep tobacco out of this agreement since September of 2011, the, the rough calculation that I did indicated that 
30, I believe it's 36 million, I did not go back and check and I will after this, but 36 million children around the world have been exposed to the opportunity to become addicted to cigarettes in those three years. The numbers are astonishing and we work, as Mary does, every day to try to stop this, both in the U.S. and around the world. And we are continuing to work domestically with our Senate and our House of Representatives and we have uh, begun to see some serious opposition. Last month, lead leaders in our House of Representatives, 62 members, uh, wrote to the President and said that what, as they understand the tobacco proposal, it is unacceptable. Uh, Twelve leaders of our U.S. Senate, including very strong supporters of our President, wrote a similar letter. And um, we are fortunate to have the very strong support of Mayor Michael Bloomberg, um, who while he is about to leave office as the mayor, continues to be a public presence all throughout the United States and intends to use every, uh, every opportunity to send the message that the TPP must no longer permit the tobacco industry from bringing these abusive lawsuits. So we continue to support Malaysia, we continue to lobby our own government, and we are very hopeful that um, through the confluence of so much work across the globe, uh, we will be successful, but the jury is certainly still out, and that is why I have flown halfway around the world to see what we can do uh, in, uh, here in Singapore, as, uh, as, as Deborah, I, I believe, mentioned, uh, who knows what trade-offs uh, might uh, occur in this end game, and we certainly want to make sure that tobacco um, is not sacrificed as a result of um, countries' interests. So thank you so much. I appreciate being here.